of those would be our speaker for this morning, Karen McCullough. Many of you may know Karen as she's worked closely with us in the past years, but she's here to bring us something new today. Karen McCullough is called a brand expert, a social media enthusiast, and a Gen Y evangelist. And she is on a mission to get you excited about change. She is an award-winning speaker who inspires and empowers organizations and individuals to evolve, grow, and realize their true potential for excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen McCullough. Good morning. I was looking around and I think I saw some of you in Grapevine. Who was here? Who is at Grapevine? So we're hoping that nobody gets by that light switch this morning and keeps the lights on, right? Yeah, that's an inside joke. So um, basically, I speak on the generations, and my talk is called The Generational Advantage. But today, I thought I would change it up, and I would help some of you who are creating meetings that have all the generations, right? Sometimes that's a challenge. And how do we get a meeting that appeals to um, the very young? And the not so young, I won't call us old, but some of us that are a little bit older. So I thought I'd start with a story. And uh, my story goes like this. I came from retail. I live in Houston, Texas, and I had a clothing store for years. And I decided to make a transition into speaking in 2000. And um, if any of you are from Houston, you might know some of these companies. My first client I was so excited was Enron. <laughs> my second client was Arthur Anderson. And I topped it off, the triumvirate was with the Bank of America at the time. So um, November of 2001, uh, I lost everything. And I had to start over again, right? And that wasn't so bad because I had just started speaking. And so the first thing that I did was I looked for a mentor. And I selected a guy. And it's interesting because as I look back over this, if I had picked a woman as a mentor, my whole career might have gone in a different direction. But I picked a guy who was in corporate. And he taught me more about getting to the point, don't tell too many personal stories, be direct. And it's interesting because I selected someone who was a little bit different. And I got a different perspective. Perspective is really my whole point here this morning. Because we're going to be coming at our meetings and we're going to be really catering to those with different perspectives. And so I thank him all of the time because I really got a different perspective. I may have been, if I hadn't had him, I may have picked a woman and I may have really started more in the female conference business. And that would have changed the entire, really, direction of my speaking career. Not good, not bad, but just different. So I started speaking, and I'm doing corporate, and everything is going along great. And then Thanksgiving of 2008, I get a call from Sun Microsystems, who is now Oracle. Does anybody remember 2008, the end of 2008? You remember our business, right? And she says, the world is falling apart. We're canceling all of the events for next year. And that happened. My 2009 was a total blank calendar. So I made a decision that it was time for me to start learning something new. And I didn't know much about this social media and that the Facebook thing that was out there, right? So we had a young, young social media guru in Houston. Her name was Crystal Washington. And I bet some of you have heard Crystal speak. She was 26 years old. I needed her to teach me about Facebook. And she needed me because she wanted to become a speaker. And so the two of us combined, and we did this cross-mentoring. And I learned social media. And she, today, is one of the top speakers in the country, right? So when we first started speaking, and she was speaking, and I was speaking, I wanted her to come to my conference. I belong to the National Speakers Association. And I said, you've got to come to the conference. I love this conference. Join the association. So she reluctantly joined. And she paid her dues, and she went with me to the conference. And the first speaker up, I said, you're going to love this speaker. It's my favorite speaker, right? I'm sitting next to her, and I'm noticing that she's kind of twitching, and she's looking around, and she's on her phone. I got it. She did not love the speaker. <laughs> Two days later, we're at lunch, and she said, you know what? I'm done with the conference. We were in Anaheim. She said, I'm going to Disney for the day. Yeah, you baby boomers are laughing. Who would leave a conference that you paid $1,000 for, take the whole day off and go to Disney? She did. And I said, but what about the conference? And she said, oh, I'll get everything on tape. When the conference was over, we got back to Houston, and we both debriefed. What I found out was we're different. She doesn't like anything I like at all. 
Instead of trying to convince her, I asked her to share. And I learned so much about millennials. And I have become a millennial evangelist because I see the future. So I hope today that some of the things that I talk about will help you see the future both ways. Because we have baby boomers, we have Generation X, and we have millennials. And soon we'll have Gen Z coming to our conferences, right? And so the first thing I want to say is I'm going to offend everyone. Because I have to stereotype, right? Because that's the only way we can really study a, a category. So if, if, if I offend you, I'm sorry. If I stereotype, I'm sorry. But sometimes we have to do this as we're speaking just to begin to create that format. So let's start really quickly and go through the generations. This is like, in a nutshell, this is really what they want at a conference. So we, I have been interviewing for two months, and we've come up with some data here. I'm not going to really share today with traditionalists or Gen Z, because right now traditionalists are only 1% of the workforce, and Gen Z really hasn't started yet. They are working in the restaurant business and probably in some hotels, but they're really not in corporate America yet, so we haven't studied them. So I'm going to focus my attention right now on the baby boomer, the Gen X, and the millennial. So do we have any baby boomers in the room? Let me see a show of hands. Do we have any? Yeah. Remember baby boomers when you, you were the whole room? Most, yeah, you remember that. And you, you used to, woohoo, I'm here. Now they go like this. OK, I'm here, right? Yeah, baby boomers. We love you. I'm a baby boomer. So baby boomers, 1946 to 1964, those are the dates. As if you come to any of my generation talks, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt if your mom worked. If you're independent and your mom worked, you're pretty much a Gen Xer, but we don't have time for that today. So right now, they're 31% of the workforce. And if you're talking to lawyers, they're 98% of the workforce. Um, it just depends on the group that you're talking to, so you need to really know the group. But let's just go with the 31%. So basically, right now, Coming to a conference, they want to still gain knowledge, okay? Here's what they want. Knowledge, relationship building. But they want to be valued. They don't want to be invisible. They want to be valued. And so we have to give them opportunities in your conference for them to talk and share their wisdom. Opportunities to talk and share. Because if they don't, when they leave, think about this, they're taking all that experience with them. So we need to be smart and get them talking and opening up and sharing experiences as they want to continue to learn and grow. Gen X, where are you, Gen X? Let me see you show a hand. Yeah, right, that's probably most of the room, Gen X. If you look at Gen X right now, they have a little person on their shoulder. Everything I'm saying, that person's going, right. Yeah, right, right. Or, oh, no, that's not true. Yeah, Gen X, I love you, Gen X, but I can't really talk about you. I've got to say what you want right now in conferences right now, time is your currency. Is this conference worth going to? I'm going to either have to get a sitter, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing with the family, I've got to take time off. Is it worth it? So when they look at something, they're looking at it in terms of time and money, and is it worth my time for me to go? OK, they want career advancement. So it's about what's in it for them. So there needs to be a piece in there about how they're going to advance their career and get to that next level, right? Family and personal life. So they want to go to a, a hotel that maybe has a lazy river because they're going to bring their kids with them, right? And they want to make sure. Last night I saw so many kids over at the Moody Gardens. They want to make sure that the conference can accommodate where they are with their families. They want to, they want to gain knowledge. They enjoy technology, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And they want it to be productive. As I get into millennials, I used to call you Gen Y, but I'm back to millennials. Do we have any millennials in the room? These are people that are 35 and up. Yeah, about as many as Gen Xers. Hi, millennials. I love you. I'm only going to say nice things, right? OK, so number one, time. Time is important to them. But it's really more about how, quick, how long are the sessions? How quickly can I get there? Can I move through it? So they're looking at time in a little bit of a different way than the Gen Xer is looking at it. They're looking at it in times of don't waste my time. Is this fast? Is this hurry? They want things to happen in a, in a really kind of speedy manner, right? Advancement leadership. So they want to have some sessions on growing their leadership qualities, right? Flexibility. I can attend this. I don't have to attend it. And that's why I love coming to the Connect conferences, because they give you opportunities. When we were at the Gaylord, does anybody remember the sessions that were out at, in the lobby and the couches? And you could go sit in those, and you could stay if you enjoyed them, or you could move on. They really enjoy that flexibility. They want an experience. They want an experience, and we'll get into this a little bit later. So you can kind of read all of this as I'm going on, but I've got to move on, because everybody wants 
information, learning, and growing. So let's move on and talk about some of the myths. I am going to bust some myths here today. And some of you may be shocked at what I'm going to say, but I am a truth teller because I've been to so hard. This is my life. I'm at conferences every week. So number one is that each generation has their own unique learning style. We learn about, well, every generation has a specific way of learning. That's not true. We have preferences, preferences. And I'm saying that because our preferences are the way we were taught when we were a kid. But they can change. They're just preferences. So people want the boomer. They feel, oh, they just want to have a sage on stage. They want somebody to talk for 90 minutes to two hours, and everybody takes notes, right? That's what people feel the boomer wants. Gen X wants to be in and out. They want to use their tablets. They want to sit where they want. They want to get up and go. But they want content. The millennial starts to want the experience. You can be looking through my pictures here. But what we're finding is that all generations are here for the relationship. All generations want an opportunity to talk. And we, giving that conference, we have to be able to provide opportunities where people mix it up and they talk, right? The one that I was just talking about was called the quick fire. And I love this one. And I learned this at Connect. And this was a, a place where we could go and sit in a session, but get up and leave if it wasn't for us. And they were much more informal. So what we're beginning to look at with learning is it doesn't have to always be formal. It can be informal, but we have to always have an opportunity in that session where people are talking and growing relationships. People say, oh, we've got to have a TED Talk, TED Talk, TED Talk. Let me, let me warn you about TED Talks, because I've been in so many right now where the conference wants a TED Talk. I'll give you an example. I did a TED Talk for a credit union. I don't know if any of you work with credit unions, but in the credit union, you may have people who are 80 years old in your audience. And we did TED Talks. They had six speakers do a TED Talk. 20 minutes. We weren't TED Talk speakers. What I noticed were the speakers cut out all the fun. And it was content, content, content. The audience were not TED Talk audiences. They wanted the fun. And so what happened was the set was beautiful, and we all did TED Talks, but I felt a disappointment in the audience. You've got to know your audience. If you're going to do a TED Talk, you better have pretty cool talking heads in your audience. You know what I mean? Because they're going to be fast and they're going to be information packed. But when we're used to maybe playing a game and some interaction, we have to take that out because we only get 12 to 19 minutes to talk. So we have to begin to say, when something is cool and it's new, don't jump on the bandwagon immediately. Look at your audience. Look at the mix and decide, is this the best format for my audience? It may be cool and it may be hip, but it may not be the right time. So what we're learning about learning is that we're learning that people want to talk. When we speak, when we talk, you will get more from it. You will begin to understand. So we're beginning to look for interaction where we can have that baby boomer who has so much information begin to talk and begin to share. People learn best when they are participating. People learn best when they're participating. So don't worry, you're going to all be participating really soon, right? right? So I did a conference. This was just recently. It was a three-hour session. I was the oldest person in the room. I am sure of it. And I was watching the millennials three hours because we heard that millennials can't sit still for 20 minutes. They stayed. They were periscoping, I have to admit. They were walking around taking pictures of everyone. It was highly interactive. But this session was fun. If you'll notice, there's a crown on someone's head over there. If you'll notice, someone were taking notes with paper and pencil. Some were taking notes on their phone. Some were just taking photographs. We photographed all of our notes so that everybody could get a copy. But it was three hours. Nobody left. So when we start to make generalizations and stereotype young people that they can't sit still, I think they can't sit still when it's boring. Do you agree? So we have to begin to look for things that are fun and interactive, and we have to begin to start creating, because we all want choices. We all want choices. So that was number one. Number one was we have to begin to look. Number two, technology is going to solve all of our problems with millennials. Just let them use their phones, and they'll be happy, right? And so we talk about that, but what we're finding, millennials are dying, especially those that have a, a career path in mind. They're dying to talk to you, Paul. They want to find out what's going on at the Marriott's. They want to find out what's going on. So we're looking for leaders. We're looking for leaders in our networking. 
So I was just at a conference. This baby boomers, you're going to love this one. I was the speaker, and it was a lot of millennials. And it was a lot of baby boomer CEOs, because it was called the Outdoor Industry Conference. So it was the head of REI, and all these big shots were there. When it was the interactive piece and the networking piece, I was at the bar. I don't know why I got to the bar. I have no idea. But I was at the bar, and so were they. The bar was filled with the baby boomers. And I said, what are you guys doing here? Oh, they're doing a networking thing, and we're not going to go. We're going to let the kids network alone, right? You've got to talk to your leaders, baby boomers. They've got to attend the networking events because millennials, Gen X, we're looking for career growth. We want to hear the secrets. And so we've got to begin to tell our baby boomers how important it is and our leadership how important it is to attend the networking events that you say are for the kids. You've got to be there. So people want to have that interaction. So I put up what are some of the hot topics right now. Everybody says you've got to do polling. Everybody wants to get their phone out. Well, if everybody's doing it, I wouldn't do it. Because some people, the polling doesn't always work. I've been to an event where they've used flags, and they've, they've waved their flags. So I went and I bought hundreds of flags. They're too heavy to carry around, to be honest with you. I'd rather just have you raise your hand, be fun and interactive. But people are doing polling. My, my, my whole concern is don't do things just because you want to throw it in there. Make sure that if you're going to poll the audience, it works. And make sure that it really relates to what you're talking about. Have anybody in here used Double Dutch? If any of you want information on this, email me later. This is a really cool app. And I only hear it from my planner. So Double Dutch is an app that you can buy, especially if you're putting on conferences, where it has all kinds of fun things that you can do right in the app for you, OK? So I just put some things up there. But the one I really like is the deep dive. When we do deep dives, and we call it deep dive, we give people an opportunity to take that information and to then go deeper with it and to share. So this deep dive concept, is, is it's new, but it's, it's kind of old. Because it doesn't everything kind of resurface and reoccur? So as we're thinking of ways of putting in technology, we want to remember that it's not that necessary. Not everyone wants to pull their phone out all the time. So I have, and again, if any of you want to talk to me about this later, I can send you. I have a blog on this one. But I came up with 10 ways that technology enhances your job. Site selection, scheduling, event and marketing, speaker selection. Right now, there are so many websites that show the videos. Even YouTube right now is a great way to do it. Travel, um, they've got event apps out there right now. The problem with event apps, which I'm hearing when I'm out there, is if people go to a lot of conferences, they don't want to keep downloading an app. Because now every event has an app, and they're going, oh, I've got to download another app. So Double Dutch will give you that event app right on the app, right? Gamification, we're going to do that one. Gamification is really big. So I went to an entire conference on how to do gamification. So we're going to do something really fun at the end. So don't walk, get up, and leave at the end of my talk, because that's where the fun is going to be. Um, we're going to do it. As, as I'm talking right now, if any of you have a pen or a pencil, pull it out, because I forgot to put it on the table. Registration, live streaming. How, about, how many of you use live streaming? Yeah, live streaming is really big right now. So if you can't go to the conference, don't worry. You can get it on live screening. Think about that. That could be a detriment. Oh, I'm not going to go. I'll just live stream it later. So I have a solution for that one. And data analysis. So these are just some of the ways that technology can help you. And like I said, if you want me to go deeper, just send me an email, and I will help you with that one too. Um, no, myth number three, boomers, I love this one, boomers, um, they don't really know how to use their phone. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. It's 2017. Boomers are hip. So I don't want to hear, that, oh my god, my boomers can't pull out. Please. They can, and they know how to. And so we've got to stop labeling people, and we've got to stop acting like the boomer is living in the dark ages, right? Because really, they're, they're, they're young 50-year-olds right now, right? Boomers, right? And so <clears throat> I want you to really stop thinking of the boomer as somebody that is as old as your grandma. Could be your grandma, though. So here's the deal. You've got to begin to understand we all want to get our information from different places. Yeah, I know. I, I kept it up there. I'm sorry. I had to put it up there. Anyway, if you know me, you're going to get stuff like this, right? So when we start to think about how we're marketing our conference, how are you getting through to people? How are you marketing? 
This is like the most fun right now. Remember I talked about 2009 was my year of learning social media from Crystal? That was the year I realized that this stuff is free. I got really excited because there's so many cool ways that we can connect with our audiences. We just have to know what they are. So I'm going to, I know you're all taking a picture of that slide. You can have my slides, guys. Just, I'll give them to you at the end. But OK, I got to move on. So we, I started studying Facebook because they say that baby boomers are the only generation on Facebook right now, that millennials are not. That is not true. How many of you have Facebook stock? Buy it. Um, billions of people, billions, I don't have the exact number, but billions of people are on Facebook, including millennials. But it's what you put on Facebook. It's what you put on, well, Twitter is, is fine. How many of you use Twitter? How many of you are tweeting right now? I hope you're tweeting K underscore McCullough. It's me. Um, Twitter is a great way, but we find that really the number one way is through Facebook, but we're putting the wrong things up on Facebook. The second best way is YouTube and videos. So we've got to really begin to think about how we're marketing our conferences. How are we getting through? You're not going to believe this, <clears throat> but Pinterest is right under, for the most users, right under Facebook. Think about having a Pinterest site of all the pictures every time you do a conference of all the fun that people are having. Beware of who you put in your pictures. Beware of some of the pictures. You want to make sure that you have all the generations in your pictures. You want to make sure that people are smiling in your pictures. You want to make sure that when people look at your pictures, they wish, oh my gosh, I had gone to that conference. I see sometimes people put pictures up that would keep me away from a conference. I have been to conferences where I say, hey, don't put that picture in. Don't put, do you have any young people here? Put the young people in the picture. If we want to attract younger people to our conferences, we need to put younger people in our pictures. I'm going to say it again. If we want to attract younger people to your meetings, right, we have to think of who we're putting in the pictures. Now, older people, don't get mad. I'm one of you. But don't put a whole group of me in there, or you'll never get anybody coming. You have got to put younger pictures in. So for me as a speaker, they're asking me to do videos right now. Now, I've looked at speaker videos on promoting the conference, and they scare me. Did any, how many of you look at, oh, I wouldn't go to that one. They've got a speaker, like, and they put the camera up, and they go, you're going to have to come to my session. So what we have to do is we're starting to say, could you create one that's a little bit more entertaining? So recently, I did one, and I got some good reviews on it, so I'm going to share it with you. It took a little bit of time. But let's see what it looks like. Please. Hi. Notice I'm packing. Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to Atlanta. I'm going to be speaking at the PEI conference. I am so excited. They brought me in to speak on the generations this year. My topic is called the generational advantages. New rules need new tools. Yeah. So I'm going to be speaking on all of the generations. You know, I'm a baby boomer, but Gen X, I love Gen X. And oh, I can't forget millennials. Yeah. Do you think that this looks a little too young? So I'll be speaking on all the generations telling you about their top motivators, their different communication styles, what attracts them and what repels them. And you know what? For those of you that manage people that are younger or older than you, I'm going to do a whole piece on managing others. Yeah, I love it. I cannot wait to go. I'm getting all ready because I'm going to Atlanta. Yeah, I'm going to. What? I thought it was. Oh, I'm a little early. It's not until October 18th through the 21st in Atlanta at the Georgia World Conference Center. Yeah, I'm speaking on Thursday the 20th. I'll start packing in October, um, but it's never too early for you to register, right? So uh, what am I going to do with the rest of my day? Maybe a little Pokemon Go. I had 300 at my breakout session. It worked. It worked. It worked. You know what, we just thought of that one, but now I'm beginning to think as someone books me for a conference, I owe it to them to create a video that's going to get people interested, watching the video, and come. No extra charge. We should be doing that as speakers. So we start to think of how are we going to create things? How are we going to use social media as a tool to get people to come to our events where they're excited about coming? So I, I love that piece. So, the millennials are here. Oh my gosh, let's, let's run and hide. So I thought I would spend a little bit of time talking to you about the millennials and the meeting, in the meeting industry, right? So let me, uh, let me go on. So 
a couple weeks ago, I was asked to do this program for a big bureau. And so really, a couple months ago. So I thought about how can I make it interesting. And I just happened to have a nephew who graduated from SMU who was hired by Oracle. Now, the reason that I know Oracle so well is that Oracle is known for their onboarding projects of millennials. Have you heard about it? I've been to conferences where Oracle talks about some of the things that they've done to get millennials in. Has anybody heard of all of this onboarding at Oracle? Any show of hands? OK, well, then I'll tell you all about it. So I had a nephew that signed up. He graduated from SMU, so he was 21 years old. And he got, he got the job, and he was invited to two-week orientation in San Francisco. He was so excited. So I called him when it was over, and I said, what was it like? And he went, oh my gosh, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. I loved it. Number one, there were like 365 of us from all over the country. So I was told that these, this is my class. They called it a class. If I have any questions, we got, we got everybody's cards. We're going to call each other. We're going to form teams. We're going to have mastermind groups within our class to help us continue learning. But the coolest part about it was I met all the top guys. And then he started naming all of the people from Oracle that he met. They cared about us. And he said, it's going to be hard. He said, I'm in the school of sales, and I had no idea it was going to be hard. I'm going to have to have perseverance. I'm going to have to keep trying. They're, they told me I need to get the killer attitude. He said a couple other things they told him that I can't repeat. But, I, but he was shocked. He was shocked because it's going to be so much hard work. <laughs> and I was kind of giggling. He said, but at Oracle, they work hard and they play hard. And we went to um, happy hours and part, and I, I'm going to love this. And he went on and on and on, and he kept talking about the work. So I just saw him last week. So he's been there like a month. And he goes, it's hard. <laughs> but I have friends I call and we share. I want you to understand this because we have 21, 22-year-olds that have never been to a conference and they're going to start coming. And we have got to talk to them and we have got to be friendly. We've got to understand that they do enjoy being with their friends and their people because this is part of who they are. But we have to begin to look at our conferences because they get scared and they don't know. I'm not going to say that they were pampered, but maybe just a few of them were. And now they're going to be put into where they have to go into sales, Marriott. They've got to sell. And for some of them, they may not have that killer instinct. They may not have that perseverance. And so as we do our conferences, we have to begin to look at how can we go a little bit deeper into what the world is really like and help give them these experiences. It's going to be a different world. And you're, you're in the center of it. Because you're creating events, you're creating meetings, you're creating experiences to attract this new generation. I love it. So what do they want? Well, they, want, they like casual. They do like casual. But what else do they want? They want experiences. And they want experiences. This, was take a, this is from a conference I was at. I was just at this conference in September. They want experiences with all the generations participating that when you hear about it, when you are maybe listening to the tape from the conference, you go, oh man, I wish I was there. Because you've got to give them experiences that can't be broadcast for the people that didn't go. You've got to give them experiences that, yeah, we've got good speakers, but we've also got phenomenal things going on that you don't want to miss. And so this was one of the activities that everybody participated in. Nobody went to the bar. It was a lot of fun. You've got to create experiences for them where they have social interaction. This is huge. So we've got to have social interaction, meaningful connections. I keep saying it over and over because baby boomers, we are the relationship people. Now we have to teach it. We have to teach people, OK? They want knowledge. They want active participations. And here's the coolest thing. They want interesting locations. So maybe you've got a great hotel with a great bar, but they want to go, if you're in Austin, they want to go on 6th Street, man. They don't want to stay, although they love the hotels, they want to get out and see the city. They want to get out and see what's going on in Galveston. They may want to go over to that uh, rainforest cafe and see those animals talking to them with the, when the rain comes out. I don't know. But they want experiences that are outside the hotel. So as you're picking places, you've got to look for it because they want to be part of the scene. They want to be part of it. They want to be part of it. If you're doing a cooking, they want cooking class, they want to be part of the cooking class. They want to be in that experience. I think it's exciting. So, I know how many of you have been to something like this. This is what I, I did this one. I think I was in Irvine speaking for Connect. 
And right after I spoke, everybody went to a big room and we all created packages to feed the hungry. And everybody, and the music was a riot. They played all the generations and people were dancing. It was a great way to combine doing good, being good, and being part of the conversation, right? So for some of us, this is an interesting one. I just read this in Fast Company. I want you to go back to my story with Crystal. And remember, we're here cross-mentoring. You're teaching me something, I'm teaching you something. And Fast Company just did an article on Paul. Paul is 70 years old, and Pfizer brought him in as an intern. And in the beginning, people thought he might be weird because he wore a suit every day and he carried a briefcase until they heard that Paul was a big success with Goldman Sachs. And they wanted to find out the secrets. And so every day, people ate lunch with Paul. And in the end, it's a love story. Paul's wife is a little upset because she wanted to go to France that summer, but he's already signed up to do internship the next summer, so I guess she's going to have to put her vacations on the side. Yeah. So I spoke kind of quickly. I had to get through, but I want you to think about the three things that everyone wants in a conference. We want to build our knowledge. We want to have networking experiences. And for baby boomers, please reach out and meet people who are younger than you. This is the future. And begin to share your experiences and listen to what they have to share. And we want to have cool experiences. We want to be a part of it. We want to remember what that conference is like. We want to remember what the city's like. We want to love the hotel. Sometimes, I was just at the AC. I, I was just talking to Paul. I was in Boston at this really cool hipster hotel. I've been telling everybody about it. I want to go back and stay at that hotel. So those of you that are hoteliers in here, those of you that are in food services, how exciting a time to be living? Because finally, we, we want you to do your best, but we want you to surprise us. We want it to be an experience that we can go back and talk about. So I thought I would end this with giving you an experience today. So we're going to play a game. Because this is why I love Jimmy Fallon. I thought when Jimmy came on the scene, I was a little worried. Like, what's Jimmy going to do? Well, Jimmy changed late night, didn't he? Yeah. By playing games. So we're going to play a game. At your table, there should be every table. I don't know where your list went over here. I'm looking and I don't see it. I'm getting nervous. OK, you have a piece of paper with a list from 1 to 10 and a half. One person has to be the writer. So, and that should probably be the person who's the hippest at your table. We're going to need a hipster. <laughs> yeah, don't fight over it. I, Here's how it's going to go. Shh, real quick, here's how it's going to go. You got to huddle, whisper. I'm going to play a theme song, a theme song from a favorite TV show. I think I've hit all the generations. I think I've hit all the dates. The first table that gets all 10 and a half is the winner. I don't, I, I don't know how many winners we're going to have. I only have like 20 prizes. but. What I want you to do is quietly write down the name of the TV show, and then I'm only going to give you like 10 seconds. Excuse me? Yeah, 10 and a half. Just don't worry. Don't worry. Don't think too hard. It'll come. 10.5. I threw in an extra one. So instead of 11, it's just 10 and a half. Um, but you have to put the name of the show on the paper. You don't have to put the date. The first table that gets the most will, be, will win. Are we ready? You've got to write it down, so whisper. Shh. Ready? Everybody ready? Here we go. Love. Who got it? Love boat. All right. We're doing good. Did anybody not get that one? We could have been a table of millennials, but how about this one? Shh.
We got that one. We got that one. All right, here we go. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. How we doing? All right. Shh, shh. Oh, I love that music. Oh, 1970, MASH. How about this one? I'll give you a hint, Nickelodeon. Nobody got that one. Drake and Josh. <laughs> Who remembers it? You'd have to be awfully young. Oh, remember that one? 1978. All right, how about this one? Ah. Oh. Got it. Seinfeld. All right, we're getting, get, we're almost there. How about this one? HBO. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, good. You got it. Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah, you, you gotta watch if you want to learn about millennials. You better watch that one. You got it. Anybody else got it? Okay. Anybody? Who's got one? Everyone, all but one. All but one, all but two. Okay, okay, so we got, okay, good. We got, okay, guys, you gotta get this last one. I don't have enough candy bars. <laughs> Here we go. I love Lucy! How many did you get? Did you get nine? Nine. Stand up. Stand up if you got nine. Have your table stand up. Stand up so we can give you an applause. Let's give them. Wait, wait. I want, I want them to look at you. Come here. Actually, come up. I want you to look at what won. Come here. Come up here. You've got to come up here. I'll give you a okay, but Come on. I love it. Let's take a peek at their ages. Come on up. Come on up. I want you to see. I hopefully we've got a cross generational team. Come on up. Of all the generations. Where's my millennial? Who knew all the millennial songs? Yeah, so let's give them a hand. It takes a cross generational team. Thank you guys. I'll give you your candy bars. Grab them in the bag here. Come as you're going out, just grab them and go. Take one. Thank you. Okay. Grab them in the bag. Go. Thank you. I just want you to see. How old are you? 30. Little millennial. How old are you? Gen X, 45. 45, old lady. How old are you? 32. 32, millennial. It takes a village. It takes a team. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. My name is Kara McCullough. I want you to remember Cross Generational. Thanks for having me. No time for a story, so go out and have a great time. See you later. Thank you. Let's give yourself a hand. Thank you.